Hello, everyone. I'm Teacher Go. Today, we'll be discussing organizational marketing. Through today's lesson, we aim to understand the following: first, the composition of organizational markets; second, characteristics of organizational markets; third, the buyer-seller relationships in organizational markets. All right. Let's first look at the first point: the composition of organizational markets. Let's see what organizational markets are. Organizational markets are formed by various organizational entities, representing the aggregate demand for business products and services. In other words, a market is a total of demands. Except here, the main entities are formed by organizational entities, not by consumers. This is a conceptual distinction. Between organizational markets and consumer markets, what does it include? Industrial markets, reseller markets, and government markets, all of which are highly structured. Hence, we refer to them as organizational markets to distinguish them from consumer markets. Let's first look at the industrial market, also known as. The producer market or the business market. It refers to the market composed of individuals and organizations that purchase products and services to produce other products or services for sale, rental, or supply to others. It sounds lengthy and complicated, but to summarize in one sentence, they purchase not for consumption, but for further production or rental. They don't consume it themselves. What are these? Agriculture, forestry, aquaculture, and many more. Please take a look yourself. Industrial goods purchased by industrial buyers for processing, production, and operations are called industrial goods, not consumer goods. These are industrial goods. Intended for further processing, reproduction, or business operations, not for consumption. This is a fundamental difference. Here, you won't find consumer goods. What is the reseller market? It consists of individuals or organizations who purchase products and services to resell or rent them to others for a profit. In other words, they buy these products not to consume them themselves. But to resell or rent them to others. Common examples include wholesalers, which are quite easy to understand. Wholesalers buy goods, definitely not for themselves to consume right away. They resell them to other wholesalers or to retailers. Another example is retailers who supply products and services directly to the end consumers. All these are part of the organizational market. Retailers, when they purchase items, do not do so for their own consumption. Instead, after buying, they aim to make a profit by selling to the final consumers. The third component of the organizational market is the government market. It refers to various government entities that purchase or lease goods to carry out the government's primary functions. Forming a market, in other words, the government entities we are familiar with include schools, among others. This government is not just simply or solely referring to, for example, city or provincial governments. It's not limited to these. Schools, for instance, can also be included in this category. These government markets, take a look, emphasize a point here. Government agencies often need to purchase goods and services, creating a very large market. In the government market, global government procurement constitutes a vast market that is strictly regulated. Next, let's discuss the characteristics. Organizational markets and consumer markets differ in their primary constituents. As already mentioned, organizational markets are highly structured and consist of individuals or groups organized. They are termed highly structured 
because in these entities, as opposed to individual consumers in consumer markets, these consumers, though there are consumer unions or consumer associations, voluntary consumer organizations, these are relatively loose in structure. Their purchasing behaviors also vary greatly. The differences are significant. Let's see what characteristics they have. What are these characteristics? First, derived demand. Second, multiple decision makers. Third, complex processes. Fourth, provision of services. The first three might be easier to understand. The fourth might be a bit more perplexing. Let's look at them one by one. The first one is derived demand. Actually, the demand of organizations for purchasing a product is really because there is a consumer demand for it. This prompts them to buy such a product. That is, their demand is derived from the consumer's need. And hence it is called derived demand. For example, a shoemaker buys leather driven by the fact that consumers want to wear leather shoes. So, its demand for leather is derived from the consumer's desire to wear leather shoes. The second is multiple decision makers. The reason for this lies in the particularly large volume of purchases. At such times, if the decision is made by a single person, it's easy to make significant mistakes that could result in substantial losses. Therefore, in major purchases, there is a characteristic called multiple decision making to minimize risk and increase professionalism. The third is complex processes. That is, the procurement processes are very complex. These processes require the participation of multiple decision makers, including legal experts, technical experts, and marketing experts. Thus, a very complex purchasing process is formed. The fourth is the provision of services. As I mentioned earlier, it might be confusing. What does it mean? It means that material products alone cannot satisfy all the needs of organizational buyers. That is, these organizational buyers are not just purchasing products. They also require maintenance services, warranty services, and even more personalized requirements that you need to meet. These services come along with the products. At this time, the services they require are diverse and can even be personalized. This means that in the organizational market, we are discussing these quite prominent characteristics compared to the consumer market. Now, the third point. Let's look at the buyer-seller relationships in the organizational market. In terms of composition, what do they reflect? It's the relationship between selling organizations and purchasing organizations, commonly B2B, which stands for business to business, or commercial transactions between businesses involve traditional buying and selling relationships. This can be transactional or relational in nature. What does that mean? Transactional means the deal is done once the transaction is complete. Buy and done. A one-off deal. Or, even if it's not a one-off, the interaction ends once the trade is done. But relational involves building a good relationship between the two parties. Then, when I want to buy something, I think of buying from them because I have a good relationship with them. The second is key account orientation. Due to the importance of these clients, the seller invests dedicated management resources for them. For example, assigning a customer manager to exclusively serve a single client or business. Dedicated service to this enterprise. The third is commitment between key accounts. At this time, it's not just about having a customer manager. It's more than that. We establish a large team. focused solely on you. For instance, suppliers to Walmart, which has many real suppliers to Walmart, would have a dedicated team serving Walmart exclusively. The fourth type is called strategic customers. At this time, 
the relationship takes an even higher step, meaning both parties have formed a symbiotic relationship, prosper together, suffer together. This forms a strategic relationship, elevating it to a higher level. Differences and connections between organizational markets and general consumer markets. Let's discuss this here. Organizational buyers and general consumers still have many similarities. We've put them together. There are many similarities, but the decision-making of organizational buyers compared to individual consumer decisions includes more economic or functional factors. However, just like in the general consumer market, emotional factors also play a role. After all, the implementers in the organizational market are also human. So emotional factors are also intertwined in the process. Another aspect is that organizational market purchases are also based on brand loyalty, similar to general consumers. Then, between suppliers or sales personnel, there are long-term contacts, which are more pronounced than in general consumer interactions because they are major clients to reduce sales costs, including decision-making and risk costs. We establish long-term relationships. Third, personal aesthetics can also influence the purchasing behavior of organizational buyers. This is a distinction. The following is a commonality. Students, today we've summarized a few things. The composition of the organizational market, the characteristics of the organizational market, and also, we discussed the buyer-seller relationships within the organizational market. These were the contents covered. That's all for this content. Okay, students, thank you, everyone. That's it for this lesson.